Welcome to the Cognetics Mechanical Engineering Academy. In this video, we present a brief overview of metal extrusions. We'll be discussing the direct extrusion manufacturing process, and we'll be talking about certain design aspects of framing components and other applications as they relate to metal extrusion. Here we go. All right, first let's go ahead and talk about some terminology associated with the process of direct or forward metal extrusion. Billet is the raw material shaped in a cylindrical form. Raw material could be aluminum, and aluminum is typically extruded, and it is shaped in a cylindrical form before it is extruded. The billet furnace is where the billet goes into uh, to preheat the billet in order to make it malleable but not fluid. It's still solid but malleable. We then have the hydraulic press which takes care of extruding the raw material through the extrusion die. The extrusion die is that piece which has the profile or the cross section that is to be extruded. The form, formed profile is of course the resulting extrusion with the specified cross section. To quench something is to cool it in a controlled form to relieve stress and acquire certain mechanical properties of the raw material. A puller system is placed after the extrusion system and it pulls the extrusion away from the uh, hydraulic press. We then have uh, the pull puller system takes the extrusion onto a table or, or conveyor system. The material then is taken to a stretching process because when it is first extruded it is not very very straight. Uh, so the stretching process takes care of straightening, straightening the material and also relieving some internal stresses. Of course the material then needs to be cut to length per the specifications of the product and it then undergoes some art artificial aging which is also a, a controlled temperature process which um, makes sure that the material achieves the desired mechanical properties of the extruded material. So now being somewhat familiar with the terminology of the direct metal extrusion process uh, we can look at an image and things will make a lot more sense. Uh, what we see here, let's start from the right to the left. On the right side, we would have the hydraulic press, uh, which of course has a ram connected to it. Uh, the ram in this particular image would be um, pressing to the left to generate the extrusion, which come out on the left side, as shown in this image. So the billet is that piece inside the container that you see there in light gray uh, and originally it is uh, as mentioned before it is um, a cylindrical shape so it is placed in front of the ram it is then introduced into the container and then the hydraulic press begins to uh, pressurize and push left in order to extrude the material uh, the container is basically basically static, it is not moving, it is only the ram that's moving to the left, uh, but do note that the container itself is heated as well. Not only is the uh, billet preheated, but the container is also at a certain control temperature. And uh, typically a lubricant is used to help reduce the forces uh, that the extrusion process calls for. Okay, moving on to the left. Uh, we have the die holder and the die backer. And the die itself is the one that, that uh, contains the formed geometry, the formed profile or cross section that you're after. Uh, once everything is said and done, the, extrusion, the extruded profile comes out on the left side. So here is a quick summary of the direct or forward metal extrusion process. We, no, we now know that a billet is the raw material that is cast into a cylindrical shape and is pre-cut to a specified length before it undergoes the extrusion process. The billet is heated in a billet furnace to approximately 900 degrees Fahrenheit to make it malleable 
but it, it is still solid enough to retain its cylindrical shape. This is done to facilitate the extrusion process. Hot, the, the hot malleable billet is then forced by a hydraulic press through an extrusion die. The formed profile is cooled or quenched as it leaves the extrusion press. A puller system pulls the formed extrusion onto a table or conveyor system. Afterwards, the extruded profile undergoes a stretching process to straighten the resulting extrusion and relieve internal stresses. Then the material is cut to the uh, specified product length and it all undergoes um, a process of artificial aging that is applied to achieve the desired mechanical properties of the material. So as you know, it is important to understand as a mechanical design engineer or uh, designer, it is important to understand the manufacturing processes so that you know what pros and cons each process has so that you can more effectively design products and systems. Keep in mind, however, that what we have done here in this video is provide a very, very basic uh, understanding of the extrusion process. It, it is not, this video is not intended to go into depth as far as what the uh, design qualities and restrictions are, which are associated with the extrusion process. Let's go ahead and look at some actual parts now and discuss some of the mechanical design aspects associated with extruded parts. This is an example of an extrusion. As we talked about before, in an extrusion, <clears throat> you have a constant cross-section geometry. So the geometry that you see here is constant throughout the length of the component that you're designing or manufacturing. So in this particular example, uh, this extrusion just happens to be symmetrical uh, this way, vertically, as well as horizontally. But that is not a requirement. Uh, the only requirement for the extru extrusion manufacturing process is to have a constant geometry extruded along the length of the component that you're fabricating. Uh, of course, having trying to have constant wall thicknesses and things like that uh, are helpful, but they're not as critical as they are in, inject in plastic in injection molding. I want to clarify something about extrusion. So we're saying that uh, we have to have a constant cross-section along the length of the components. Let me show you something, though. <clears throat> in the case of a lead screw, for example, you could argue that if we cut it and look at the cross section and we cut it somewhere else along, along the length, you have the same cross section. To a point that's true, but in reality, since, since it's a lead screw and it's got this spiraling um, effect or thread, that cross section is constant, but it's rotating. So such a part would not be suitable for extrusion, for the, for the ex extrusion manufacturing process unless there was a way to extrude it and turn it as it was coming out, which is not very practical. So this is not an extruded part. Once again, when we talk about extruding, it's a constant geometry at the profile, constant cross-section, extruded without rotation throughout the length of the component. Now, this particular example here is part of uh, aluminum extrusion that is used for framing. If you want to create frames, this geometry is very versatile to do it. There are a number of vendors that, uh, that fabricate these. Uh, they're available, readily available at various places throughout the internet. You can look for aluminum extrusion and most likely these will come up. This one happens to be uh, have a black shine, shiny finish, shiny black finish. Uh, but aluminum extrusion would be a very light silver uh, or light gray in its natural raw form. Now, when you design a part for extrusion, you want to make sure that you design functionality into it. This geometry is not there just for aesthetic purposes. There, it's got function. <clears throat> um, if we wanted to attach a 90 degree bracket, for example, to the side of this. Uh, we got to figure out a way how to do that. Uh, this particular design takes these nuts right here, 
these nuts are shaped so that they slide through the end of the extrusion. So it would be coming this way, and you can slide it in. And anywhere along the length of this extrusion, you now have a threaded hole, and you can attach parts to it, such as this 90 degree bracket. For, to clarify this, um, I've already pre-assembled this one here, and you can see how extrusions of this type can be used for framing when used in conjunction with other brackets and threaded fasteners. So you can see here, we have the 90 degree, 90 degree bracket, a couple of screws, behind each of those screws is the threaded nut that I showed you that slides into the channel. Now, some nuts are designed so that you can drop them in. You drop it in and turn it 90 degrees, and, and there you go. You have a threaded hole. Those are very user-friendly. <clears throat> Just to let you know, imagine uh, th there are types of nuts that you're not able to drop in. Uh, in that case, if you assemble your frame and you have blocked the channel from both sides, and later you decide to assemble something here in the middle, you won't be able to unless you disassemble it and slide another nut in. So for that reason, I strongly recommend if you're doing this kind of design work uh, that you specify the use of uh, the threaded nuts that are able to drop in at any point in the length, uh, along the length of the extrusion, regardless of whether it has been assembled or not. Okay, and of course, uh, these threaded nuts are not used only for brackets. Uh, you can attach just about anything to them. This is a random geometry sheet metal bracket that, I'm, that, I'm, that I have attached to the extrusion. Same thing, I have a socket head cap screw, and you can't see it, but it is a threaded knot behind. So that's a little bit about aluminum extrusions, their manufacturing process, and one particular application in this example, extrusions used for the purpose of assembling frames. As usual, if you haven't done so already, be sure to sign up for free basic access to exclusive mechanical design and engineering content at mechanicalengineeringacademy.com. Also, keep in mind that we offer free live online masterclasses on mechanical design topics. Sign up today.